Here's the dilemma. How do you keep the world's entertainment capital safe for its revelers without turning it into a party-pooping security fortress? The PatScan multi-sensor covert threat detection platform is a next-generation security solution. Patriot One believes it has the answer. Using unobtrusive sensors, which generate information feeds that can be assessed to see if someone's carrying a weapon. This Vegas casino resort is now rolling out the tech, which has been in testing for the past two years. So we've got various bits of hardware here. Essentially, the system can be discreetly placed, say in a building entrance or in a turnstile. And unlike a metal detector, it creates an invisible fence you wouldn't even know was there. So if I'm carrying a concealed weapon on my person, or worse still, intent on an act of violence, the system, if it's deployed as it is here, invisibly in these planters, can kick in. The AI making a determination of whether or not this is benign and alerting the security authorities to take the relevant action. The PATSCAN device works on several levels. One sensor emits low-power microwave pulses which bounce off objects, creating so-called resonance frequency patterns that identify the shape of an object. Another sensor creates a magnetic field and detects disturbances as an object passes through. But the real smarts lie in the AI algorithms. Within seconds, they assess the sensor data against that already in Patriots One's database to figure out if weapons are being hidden. With daily shootings in the US and a knife crime epidemic in the UK, the allure of a system to keep us safe is certainly seductive. So we want to be in public schools, we want to be in, in hotels, in shopping malls, in university campuses. And so we're now in the business of, of rolling out. Obviously, North America is our, you know, our genesis, our starting point. The UK market will be extremely important to us, particularly uh, when it comes to knives because of the, the, the knife crime crisis and the fact that knives are being used by terrorist groups for mass attacks. But groundbreaking as the tech is, it's largely unproven. How accurate is your system? Because when it comes to AI, the machine is only as smart as the data that you're feeding it. Well, we've been out for a long time now with uh, tremendous partners like Westgate who've allowed us to get a lot of data here. The University of North Dakota equally has been you know, hugely supportive in that way. So we've built um, sufficiently large data holdings that we now have confidence in the accuracy of our systems, enough confidence that we're now into our first commercial deployments. Our early adopters for those commercial deployments also understand that the systems get better and better and better the more data is fed in. So they are equally allowing us to ingest data for training the system. Still, the system isn't 100% accurate or foolproof. An assailant may well get into the premises another way entirely, or a weapon could be hidden in a different shaped object like a metal box. So an additional security layer is needed. So if I'm openly brandishing a weapon, that's where the eyes of the system kick in, the so-called machine vision, where a security camera can make an assessment based on what's in my hand against its database, and if it finds that it's likely to be a weapon, it will trigger a relevant alert. The idea of augmenting human eyes with the smarts of computer vision is catching on globally, a number of outfits promising enhanced security through person and object detection. But understandably, that leaves many people uneasy. We um, uh, are very conscious of the fact people don't want to live in a mass surveillance society. And so, you know, there are different ways in which you could gather data. But we capture no personal information. We don't store or distribute any personal information. We're looking for objects. People are of no interest to us unless they are carrying a threat object. So what our um, AI has been trained to recognise is the threats. It's not making any determination on people and it's capturing no personal information, it's generating no body image. And that I think puts us on the, on the right side of that, that line between you know, too much surveillance and not enough security.